the best keto and intermittent fasting tips. Okay, the keto diet is one of the most popular diets around, but also one of the most misunderstood. So today I'm here to set the record straight and give you a quick look at some of my latest research. As you may know, the keto diet has become increasingly popular based on the belief that when your body converts to making something called ketones, you experienced improved energy and weight loss. However, it turns out ketones are not the super fuel they're made out to be. The truth is, published literature in humans proves that that's exactly opposite the case. Ketones, it turns out, are a lousy fuel. Studies at Boston and the National Institutes of Health show that even at full ketosis, that the body only gets 30% of its energy needs supplied by ketone. And the brain, which most keto experts tell you thrives on ketones, the brain at full ketosis still needs 30 to 40% of its fuel as sugar, as glucose, instead of ketones. So the idea that ketones are some miraculous fuel, or some miraculous fat-efficient tool, is simply wrong and not based on human research. Okay then, if ketones aren't a super fuel, why do they have what appears to be some really good effects? Well, as I showed in my most recent book, Unlocking the Keto Code, ketones, in fact, are signaling molecules. Now, signaling molecules are actually a communication system that tell cell membranes what to do, that tell mitochondria what to do, that tell your genes what to do. And signaling molecules, we now know, are the communication system in, in our body and all our bodies. Ketones normally would have only been generated when we were starving, when we had nothing to eat. And ketones are produced in the liver. And the body can use fat as a fuel, free fatty acids for a fuel, for almost all of our needs. The only problem with using free fatty acids is that free fatty acids are big molecules, and they can't get through the blood-brain barrier fast enough to be a good fuel for the brain when it runs out of sugar. But ketones can be made from free fatty acids in the liver, and free ketones are water-soluble, short-chain fatty acids that, good news, can get through the blood-brain barrier. So they're an emergency fuel for the brain when we run out of something to eat. Now, ketones tell your mitochondria, hey, something's up, food isn't coming, and we don't know when food's coming again. And since you guys are the key for our body to stay alive, mitochondria make energy, make ATP, you guys need to protect yourselves at all costs and take care of yourselves. And don't work so hard because, believe it or not, making energy is very damaging to mitochondria. So as strange as it seems, ketones tell mitochondria to actually waste fuel, to don't work so hard. The other things we now know ketones do is that tell mitochondria to make more of themselves. Mitochondria are unique in that mitochondria have their own DNA that's separate from the nucleus, from high school biology. What that means is that mitochondria can grow and divide, make more of themselves, 
without the cell that they live in growing and dividing. So we now know that ketones tell mitochondria, hey, you single mitochondria, I want you to make five twins, and that way there'll be more mitochondria that don't have to work so hard, and you guys can share the workload and protect yourselves. And it's called mitogenesis. But So we now know that the reason having ketones around is a good idea, at least some of the time, is to tell mitochondria to protect themselves and to make more mitochondria. And it's this combination that actually results in not only weight loss, but in improved health overall. Now, as many of you know, and I've written about in the book, most people who embark on a ketogenic diet, a traditional very high fat, low carbohydrate diet, simply quit within a month. That's because most people, number one, you can only eat so many pounds of bacon covered with cheddar cheese before you really don't want any more bacon and cheddar cheese. It just becomes profoundly monotonous. Not only that, as I point out in the book, most of the time this is a disaster for your cholesterol numbers, and number two, it's a disaster for your gut microbiome. Because your gut microbiome is actually dependent on fibers and polyphenols to prosper and to actually make compounds that are good for you and your mitochondria. And for many people, besides the incredible boredom of eating an ultra-high fat diet, many, many people don't feel very good. And as I've written about in my book, we see that people who embark on these ultra-high fat, low-carb diets, they actually, their inflammatory markers in their bloodstream go up quite dramatically. And we have them revert back to my ketogenic diet, which has far more fiber and far less fat, and we see these inflammatory markers go away. Now, the good news is that you can get the benefits of producing ketones and the benefits of having mitochondria that not work so hard and make more of themselves without eating a high-fat diet. And that's what unlocking the keto code goes into. So for one thing, intermittent fasting, that is time-restricted eating, the shorter the time window that we begin eating food and finish eating food, if we can compress that to around six to eight hours during the week and take some time off on the weekends, you can actually reliably produce ketones that will help you lose weight without changing what you're eating. And the most amazing study was a human study that I write about in the book with Italian athletes. And they took Italian cyclists and they put them on a training table, a training table they all have to eat the same thing. The groups had two groups. One group had a 12-hour eating window. That means they ate breakfast at 8 o'clock in the morning, they had lunch at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, they had to finish dinner by 8 o'clock. 12 hours eating window. The other group had a seven hour eating window. They ate breakfast, break fast, at one o'clock in the afternoon. They had lunch at four o'clock in the afternoon and they had to finish dinner at eight o'clock at night, seven hour. So the difference between the two groups was one group was fasting five hours longer per day than the other group, but they ate the exact same amount of food. What happened after the end of three months, the group that had the seven-hour eating window lost a lot of weight. The group that had the 12-hour eating window didn't lose any weight. They both had identical athletic performance, good news, 
and the group with the seven-hour eating window actually lowered the best marker for aging there is called insulin-like growth factor. They lowered their IGF-1. The group that ate in the 12-hour window had no change in their IGF-1. So just extending the amount of time between when you have your last meal at night and the first meal in the morning can make a dramatic difference in your health without changing what you eat, without being on a boring diet. So that's the first great news. The second great news is that there are compounds that can actually have you produce ketones without being on a ketogenic diet. And those are medium chain triglycerides. So medium chain triglycerides, MCT oil, are absorbed in a totally different way of any fat. They're a liquid. They're flavorless. You can get them in a powder form. And uh, women in general do better with powdered MCT than liquid MCT. Some women get a little nauseated or diarrhea with liquid MCT. But when you take MCT oil, it goes directly to your liver and it's directly converted into ketones, regardless of what you're eating. So you could have a bowl of fruit and have MCT oil, a tablespoon, and you would actually make ketones. And those ketones would signal your mitochondria to make more, make more of themselves and to waste fuel, protect themselves. Here's the other great news. It turns out that 30% of the fat in goat and sheep milk products are medium chain triglycerides. So that means you could have goat or sheep yogurt, plain. You could have goat or sheep kefir. You could have goat or sheep cheese and make ketones just eating those goat and sheep milk products. And it also explains why a large number of super old people in blue zones are goat and sheep farmers, strangely enough. And I talk about this in the new book. Now here's the final problem with embarking on a ketogenic diet. Many of you are beginning to hear about the terms insulin resistance or metabolic flexibility. And briefly, normally, our mitochondria can take sugar and convert it to energy, and our mitochondria can take fat, free fatty acids, and convert it to energy. But normally, we can do that on a dime, uh, very much like a hybrid car. When you're running on gasoline, you're charging your battery, and let's call the battery fat. When you run out of gasoline, you, your battery is charged, and you can use that battery to continue powering you along the road. We have a charged battery. It's our fat. Normally, we burn sugar as our preferred fuel. And when sugar drops, we should normally pull out that fat from our battery and use that. Unfortunately, and that's called metabolic flexibility. Unfortunately, the data on who's metabolically flexible and who isn't is scary. 50% of normal weight individuals in the United States have no metabolic flexibility. So even though you may be normal weight, 50% of you, can't make that switch. Then it really gets interesting. 88% of overweight individuals have no metabolic flexibility. And 99.5% of obese individuals have no metabolic flexibility. Which means you can't switch from burning carbs to en for energy to burning fat. And that's what's so hard, number one, about transitioning to a ketogenic diet, or even transitioning to cutting back the hours you eat, because most people can't make that switch. 
And here's the really scary take home problem. Normally, when you stop eating, about eight hours after you stop eating, you have to switch over in your brain to burning ketones as a fuel. If most of us are metabolically inflexible, that means every night, eight hours after we stop eating, our brain begins to starve to death. Starve to death because it can't get the fuels it needs. And that's one of the reasons we're seeing this epidemic of dementia, memory loss, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, because the vast majority of us, every night, because we have no metabolic flexibility, our brains starve to death. So think about that. The next time you hear that one of the things we should be doing is eating multiple small meals throughout the day to keep our energy levels up. That's really one of the worst possible things that we can do for our generalized health and absolutely for our brain health. So how do you get metabolic flexibility? Well, number one, slowly but surely cutting back on the number of hours you eat during the day. Now, you don't need to jump into the deep end if you Eat breakfast at 7 o'clock in the morning. Next week, eat breakfast at 8 o'clock in the morning. And do that all week. The next week, come on, you can now make it to 9. Next week, we'll eat breakfast at 9 o'clock. And so on. And believe it or not, after five weeks, you'll be eating breakfast at noon as if it was the easiest thing in the world. Oh, and here's the good news. You can take the weekends off. Research out of Chicago shows that when people were asked to intermittently fast during the week, but then relax on the weekends, they were much more able to stay with that program long term than if they were asked to do that every day of their lives. The other good news is you don't have to calorie count you can actually eat a full day's worth of calories. And as the Italian athlete study shows, you can actually lose weight and still eat all the calories you want as long as you compact that eating window. Okay, as you know, I've written an entire book on this subject called Unlocking the Keto Code. So if you want to learn exactly how to unlock your mitochondria, to lose weight and feel great, click the link below. You're definitely going to want to see this one. Okra and other prebiotic-rich plant foods are phenomenal for you. Okra is loaded with soluble fiber, and soluble fiber is what your gut bugs like.